Hi everyone, this is Terry, and this is lesson three for my design center in the Luminaire. We'll select my design center. One of the things you notice is I have a grid on the background. You can use the grid by going into your settings page and selecting the grid that you want to see. If, for instance, you wanted to see the quadrants, you can use that as a reference for aligning your designs. We'll just go ahead and leave it up on the screen for right now. We'll talk about the line properties that you see here and for the line stitches. As I mentioned in my other videos, there are several stitch types, zigzag, running stitch, triple running stitch, the candle wick stitch, the chain stitch, the blanket stitch, and then we have the stitch that is called the V stitch. The blanket stitch is also sometimes called an E stitch. It just depends on what your background is. I quilt a lot, so I think of it as a black blanket stitch. And then you'll see the motif stitches, and there are several of those to choose from. I can almost visualize that what will happen when we receive an upgrade that they'll add more of these stitches. Let's select number eight and choose OK. And we'll choose a color. In this case, I'll go ahead and choose a light purple. And hopefully you can see that on the screen. If not, we'll change it and we'll choose OK. Now let's talk about some of these icons here. The first icon that you see that looks like the, the pencil is right now showing the stitch that is selected. If I select the stitch, you can see that I have what's called the freehand drawing tool. I have the closed shape drawing tool. It will automatically close the straight line with one stroke and the straight line where you change directions. We'll choose each and I'll show you a couple of, of things you can do with those. So we'll use the open one. And in this top quadrant, what I'll do is I'll more or less draw something like a stipple. If I don't like it, I can choose undo. This might be one case where you want to write your name, but I don't really have a good stitch selected for that. So we'll choose undo again, and we'll just draw a curved pattern, and we'll leave it at like that. Now let's go back and let's select a different type of tool. This time we'll select the one that is the free line, freehand line tool that will close. We'll select a different color, and we'll choose a different stitch. And in this case, we'll go ahead and choose a chain stitch and choose OK. So with this tool selected, you can see there's like a string that's attached to it. So wherever I stop, it's going to close it all. Now let's go ahead and select one of the other tools. And by the way, you can select that tool here or we'll choose OK. And you can go into the properties box and select a tool. We'll choose a different color for this one, and we'll go ahead and we'll choose one of these orangish colors. And then we'll go ahead and use the next tool. This is a what I call like a point-to-point -point tool. And we didn't change the stitch type, so we'll change the stitch type by going up here, selecting a different stitch type, and we'll go ahead and choose the blanket stitch for the first one and choose OK. And while that's selected, or this line, what I need to do is take the bucket and apply it to, to that line. Now we'll go on and take the bucket and apply it to the next line as well. And then we'll choose a different type of stitch and apply it to the next line. So let's choose a different stitch type. And in this case, we'll choose the candle wick stitch and we'll choose OK, use a bucket and we'll apply that to the next line. For the next option, we'll select the tool that will change your straight line in directions and we'll choose this stitch type and we'll 
select a different color and we'll choose this brown and choose okay so the way this tool works is it, you notice that it's not doing anything right now and either it's not doing something because i don't have that tool selected which i don't and i need to select that tool i had the bucket selected so what happens is it's drawing those points and you notice I kind of have a mistake here. So let's do the undo and now we'll undo one more time and we'll start again. So one point, two points, three point, and then just close it. And now we close that design and we'll go look at our stitches. We'll choose next and you can save this to memory if you want, but for the purposes of this exercise, it's really not necessary. I do want to show you a few things though. So let's zoom in a little bit and we'll zoom to 200% and then we'll use the hand to pan and let's look at these stitches. You can see on this particular stitch type that you have the ability to change the size of that stitch. The default is 0 0.40 inches. Let's go back to millimeters by going to page nine and changing to millimeters and choose OK. And so we'll look at it. it right now it's 10 millimeters. Now I can increase the size of this and I can increase it fairly large. But one of the things that I need to think of is it's going to increase inside this box. So it's going to spread out quite a bit. And we'll go ahead and wait for it to digitize. It'll take a moment. Now you see the size of that stitch. If I want to undo, I just select undo. And I'm back to that 10 millimeters. I can also increase the spacing on it. So let's increase the spacing. And we'll leave that at four millimeters and choose OK. And you can see in just a moment that the stitch now appears. You can also place this stitch above or below a line. So let's choose undo. And we'll wait a moment until the, it appears back on the screen. And now let's go down and select this and let's flip it above the line and choose OK. It's not going to change the look significantly, but it gives you another idea of what this stitch looks like stitched above the line. Let's go ahead and scroll to one of the other quadrants by using the hand. And we'll move over and let's look at the chain stitch. We'll need to select it in our selection. With the chain stitch, you can change the size of it. Right now it's four millimeters. Let's increase the size of it. And five millimeters is the largest size. We'll choose OK. And then after we increase the size, one of the things that you can do is you can change how many times that this is going to stitch this stitch. So right now it's at four times. And so looking at this, we'll go and change it to two times which will reduce the thickness of the stitch. And you'll be able to see it in a moment. And now the next thing we'll look at is on the next quadrant. We'll select the next stitch and actually in the order that these were processed, this is the order that the stitches are. So this is what I call the blanket stitch or the E-stitch. You can lengthen the legs of this stitch by increasing it, or you can decrease it. We'll increase the first one. We'll give it a moment. So now you can see what it looks like with when it's increased. You can also spread out the distance. It's already at five millimeters, so we'll leave it like that. You can change well, let's go to the second row. So we'll select it. You can also change the thickness of it. And we'll leave it at three and choose OK. And the other thing you can change is the, the 
or the points to flip it. So if you think about a design when you have an applique and you have an inside blanket stitch and an outside, there may be a time that you need to flip this stitch and now you have the ability to do that. We'll now go to the next stitch and the next stitch type is going to be our well, candle wick stitch. In earlier videos, I've shown this. You can reduce the size or increase the size. We'll go on and increase it to 10 millimeters, which is going to be very large. And you can change the spacing of it. So let's change that. We have to wait a moment because it's digitizing this line of stitches. But we can change the spacing. And we'll set that at 5. So you'll have an idea of what it looks like. And now you see that stitch. Now let's go ahead and pan over to the last quadrant. And we'll look at the last stitch type. We can select it right here by clicking on it. When you're in the, the magnification view, you cannot click on it. So you have to click on it this way and now magnify it. So now that I've magnified it, we use the hand to pan. And now what we'll do is we can change the height of this. We'll go ahead and the height is the same as the width. We'll increase that to five millimeters. And then we can also change the length of it or how wide it is from, from the point. So we'll go on and change that as well. And we can increase it or decrease it. Let's go on and increase it a little bit and choose OK. You can also change the thickness of this stitch and we have to wait a moment while it digitizes and you can see the thickness here. We'll move this back to one and choose OK. And the last thing you can do, which is very similar to the blanket stitch or the E-stitch, you can flip this. So I can flip it so that all of this is sewn on the outside of that triangle. For the last tool that we have, which is the pick tool, what I've done is I've selected three circles that I created using the shape tool. And for each of these circles, I applied different properties to them. Just so you can see the, the properties that were selected, you can see that I have a zigzag stitch, I have a chain stitch, and the last is a candle wicking stitch. And we'll just go ahead and return back. So if I want to change to one of the stitch types to another portion of the design, all I have to do is select what I want to change it from, so I'll select this candle wicking stitch, then I'll select the bucket and I'll apply that to this. This was uh, a chain stitch before, so now I have two different candle wicking stitches. We'll go to next and you'll see that I have candle wick stitch, candle wick stitch, and I, I have the zigzag stitch. This is very helpful whenever you're creating a design and you decide you want to, to apply the same pattern to everything. All you have to do is to pick those and to change it.